ECW is next on the docket here. I think we can talk about this in one breath. Yep. It was a very short show. Well, no, that's not true. All <laughs> I, right. I got to talk about DJ Gabriel <laughs> and Alicia Fox. I wrote two lines about that. <laughs> what would you write? Here's my here's everything I wrote about that match. Alex Wright is back. Striker stole my line. He squashes Salvernaro. Wacky. <laughs> That's all the notes you took on this. Well, I remember it quite vividly. I could talk about this for five hours. First off, Steve Lewington is now a rapper or a DJ. He's a dancer. Well, his name is Whatever DJ. Whatever the fuck he is. He's Alex Wright. He has sunglasses and a leather jacket and his wrestling gear. He comes out and, and dances. Sadly, he does not do Alex Wright's dance. That would be money right there. But, uh, there he, was a reference to Alex Wright, as you noted. That, that was Matt Stryker stealing my line, making there, me irrelevant. There was also a reference to Alicia Fox being the fucking wedding planner. Yes. How the hell is a teacher getting away with this shit? Does Vince not watch this show? No. She came out and danced, which is money. Every week she needs to come out in her short shorts and dance. He had a good body in Ohio Valley, and now he's just fucking jacked to the gills. Yes. How the fuck is this guy passing his tests? I <laughs> don't know. Is there has there been a change in the policy? Perhaps. This man either is... I don't like to accuse anybody of anything, but seriously, now, come on. He's larger than he used to be, This yes. guy is gigantic right now and ripped to shreds. If this guy doesn't pass a test, we're going to know something about the test. Clearly, there's been a, a change in the in the uh, the deal here. He was just gigantic. And anyway, he they danced. They did some wacky dancing. Beat Sal Renaro. And his finisher, I swear to Christ, is a European uppercut off the middle rope. What? Why not? <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian, that they didn't check with you for approval on the finisher. Vince. Yes. An uppercut. Dude, anything... How do you go down into an uppercut? Dude, we've seen it in, in, in uh, Ring of Honor a thousand times. No, that's a forearm. I don't what? see how you, you can dive off the middle rope into an uppercut. How do you go down into an uppercut? I know Claudio's done it. It's just retarded. I'm sorry you don't like it It was now. far more retarded on this program. Maybe because they actually call it a, a, a diving European uppercut. Maybe because like, it was the finisher. It's like jumping off something and punching up at the same time. How does that even work physically? Well, his body's going down, you see, but he still throws his arm up. I don't know. This is it's stupid. Fake. It's fake, Brian. It's too fake. Wrestling is fake. I want wrestling to be less fake. There's too much fakery in wrestling these days. It's, too bad. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> DJ Gabriel and Alicia Fox danced in the ring for a while. They danced for a long damn time. Very hypnotic. And then he beat a jobber. And uh, I'm not going to flat out say that uh, the DJ here is on steroids, but the man has a steroid body. Mm -hmm. So he's either got the best genetics of anyone in the whole world, or this drug test is a sham. One or the other. Well, that would be impossible, Brian. Come on, come now. And I, I also remember seeing him in Ohio Valley, and he had a good body, but he looked nothing like this. He was smaller than he is now. That's true. Uh, yeah, the match itself, I mean, they, they danced for a long time. He did a very long squash. He used a cravat for a while. He won with his diving uppercut, and then he danced more. And Alicia told the story. You mentioned last week you were upset. That she went from being just the wedding uh, the wedding planner to now being a manager. And you I wasn't didn't upset. Get I just thought it was kind of wacky that they just mentioned it with no... They just were like, she used to be the wedding planner. And it's like, well, why is she now... What? And well, then she explained it now. She did. She took her business overseas, and she met DJ. Yeah. And they shared a passion yep. for uh, dancing and for winning. Yes. And they danced more. This is the best act in wrestling today. <laughs> <laughs> this now trumps the beautiful people. DJ Gabriel and Alicia Fox. Yeah. What's they, better than these people? They do look like they're having a lot of fun. What is better than these people right now? The beautiful people have com been completely stagnant of late. And what else is there in this in this business? Nothing. Nothing. Aside from Ogan's Championship Wrestling, which is an act into it, unto itself. Then DJ Gabriel faced a jobber. I did not watch a moment of this match. I watched Alicia Fox. She mesmerizes me. She's tasty. She is money. <laughs> this woman is money. So I, anyway. I, the only thing I have to say about the match is that Todd Grissom at one point identified a back elbow as mixed martial arts. <laughs> yeah. Alicia. <laughs> Much better. She is just incredible. She comes out and dances, and I, I'm just I'm staring at the screen like, like I'm a fucking snake, and someone's playing the flute. 
I just stare at it. My head goes back and forth. The best choice of words you could have used. <laughs> we had the greatest segment I've ever seen. That's true. DJ Gabriel and Alicia Fox were bebopping when up walked Mark Henry and Tony Atlas. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. Mark Henry was dressed as Santa Claus, and Tony Atlas was dressed as a reindeer. I would have just liked to have seen... First off, I'll tell you what happened. Mark Henry did a pro wrestling version of Twas the Night Before Christmas, told the story of the world's strongest Santa crushing Hornswoggle to death, and then he reared back and went, ha, 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 and it was awesome. Now, what I would like to have seen, as great as this was, I would have liked to have seen the original meeting where Mark Henry approached Tony Atlas and said, I have an idea. <laughs> I have written a poem, and we've got some FaceTime here on ECW, so I would like to read it, but I want to be in costume, and I've got this costume for you. And have him pull it out of the bag, have Tony Atlas look at it, react to it, and finally put it on. <laughs> this is what I would have liked to have There's seen. Many, many great things. I could break down almost every second of this promo, from, from DJ Gabriel announcing Christmas Running Man... And then doing the Rain Man, and then saying Hammer Time, and doing the funniest MC Hammer impression I've seen since the original MC Hammer. Mark Henry comes in in his Santa suit. He shouts, move! The screen freezes, and then DJ Gabriel and Alicia Fox leave, but they leave while dancing. You cannot control their rhythm. Yeah. It's, it's unstoppable. Mark Henry read his poem, and then and we need more of this every week on every show. There's nothing better than heels cutting a promo and topping it with an evil cackle. Heels don't do this anymore. They need to. And it, it tied in with the ho, 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 obviously, but every heel should end their promo with a with a evil cackle or a belly laugh or a guffaw. Some, something imita intimidating and yet awesome. We had the... We had a segment with DJ Gabriel against DJ Gabriel. At least that's what I wrote in my notes. May as well have been. Playing the part of DJ Gabriel this evening will be Paul Burchill. It was a strange match. I thought DJ Gabriel was a heel. I mean, I, I, his, his his face turn happened backstage in an unfilmed segment. Apparently, he's a baby face. <laughs> yes, yes. He uh, he came out and he danced for a while and people booed and then he played baby face during the match and then the match went on longer than the main event on Raw it may still be going on longer than the Michelle beating of Maria just on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And then finally, they uh, they did the finish, which was a flash cradle by DJ Gabriel. And uh, this was like a match that should have aired on FCW television or untelevised at a house show. <laughs> Why was thing. I watching this on Extreme Championship Wrestling? I thought I am watching a developmental match here on national TV. And it was not a particularly good developmental match. No. No. The, in fact, the highlight was not the wrestling itself, but it was the commentators where we had, they were discussing rugby because Paul Burstall used to play rugby and... I'm talking about how tough it was, and uh, uh, Grisham noted that they, they were tough in rugby. They didn't wear pads. And then he said, they stomp on each other with cleats. If that were true, hmm. I suppose people would watch rugby more often. Rugby, rugby more often. Then they were talking about uh, Paul Burchill's giant knee braces, and Matt Stryker said, those knee braces are legal because they are part of his gear. <laughs> So if, if I had case, spikes on my gear, my yes, if I my had spikes is, sticking out of my abdomen and I did a big splash for a finish, that'd be okay. If your gimmick was you were a sea urchin, yes. Yeah. Sure. Or if your gimmick is you are a knight of the round table and you come a and, sea urchin, yes. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Yeah, as, a, as an animal that has spikes on its, well, has spikes. I see. You couldn't have chose, for example, a rhinoceros. It doesn't have spikes on his belly. Well, no, but he, does that mean rhino could wear a fucking tusk on I, his head? Apparently. Jesus. We had Katie Lee Birchall versus Alicia Fox. I expected this to be an imminent disaster. As the teacher noted, it was Alicia Fox's first match in WWE at all. And I had uh, very low expectations or very high expectations for a disaster, if you want to call it, that, call it that. But it turns out she ain't half bad. And this was an above average WWE Divas match. Uh, Stryker noted that... I actually have much to say about this. I... Uh, Stryker noted that Alicia has a background in capoeira. Sadly, she did not show any of that. If she started busting out capoeira moves during her comeback, this would have been awesome. All right. Stop geeking out. It's time to get serious here on this show. 
I had no hope for this match going in, as I'm sure none of you did listening to this as well, especially those that have actually seen her in Florida Championship Wrestling. No hope going in for this match right here. And when this match was over, I'm going to make a statement right here that I'm sure everyone is going to, uh, to save. They're going to write this down. They're going to put it in a thread. They're going to prepare a, a blank post in the Brian is Wrong forum to talk about what a fool I am. But as God is my witness, I watched Alicia Fox. First off, she's the hottest girl in WWE. Sure. No yes. question. Who comes close? Maria comes close. But no. Alicia's hotter. Alicia is by far the hottest girl in this company, number one. And number two, from watching the way that she moved... From watching the way that she hit the ropes, from watching the way that she worked in this match here, if she continues to improve, within two years, she will be the best worker in this company. Of any gender? Any. Well, no, no, no. Not, of no. the girls. Any of the women. That's probably true. I, I, she will be that. the best worker of any woman in this entire company within two years. Mark my words. Yeah, the future is bright for this young lass. She has a lot going for her. She was She was great. Yeah. She said she, she, I mean, she wasn't a great worker or anything like that, but you could tell the way that she moved, mm -hmm. and and uh, I just watched that, and I thought, you are going to be awesome, yeah, unless something goes horribly wrong. <laughs> Which is always a possibility, but yeah, for her first, her debut match in WWE, it was much better than, for example, Kizarni, who's been wrestling for like 10 years. She's already better than him. Yeah. Should I keep going, then? ECW. Katie Lee and Paul Burchill face DJ Gabriel and Alicia Fox. This was fine. Alicia Fox is still very green, but I was impressed by her this week. And uh, they had a match, and Katie broke up a pin, so Alicia went after her, and that allowed Gabriel to hit Paul Burchill with his uppercut off the middle rope for the pin. This was totally fine. One thing I have to uh, mention about this match was the teacher explained that Paul Burchill was allowed to do offensive maneuvers wearing his knee braces, his yes. metal knee braces, because they were part of his ring gear. Right. And once again, I thought... Why not a guy that has spikes all over his gear? It's part of his gear. Why not a man whose gear is poisonous? Or on fire. Or or the old, why not have a guy who has a, a giant hump as part of his ring gear, and thus you cannot get his shoulders to the mat? Sure. Would this not all be legal? I, 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 apparently. The teacher makes up wacky bullshit every week. And, and Speaking uh, of wacky bullshit that comes out of the teacher's mouth, he claimed that Paul Virtual runs a 4.640 yard dash bullshit and if it's not bullshit they need to put that video on the show because that's fucking awesome ecw opened with dj gabriel versus mark henry oh yeah frankly it was just a glorified squash went about three minutes dj gabriel got some uh, frantic desperate offense in at the end and then mark henry caught him and pinned him with the world's strongest slam i have no idea what this what this accomplished it was not a great match to entertain fans of tv I can't really say it got Mark Henry over any more than he was before, and uh, it made DJ Gabriel look like a complete geek. So, like I say, this is just a waste of time. Yeah, I think the writing is on the wall for DJ Gabriel, because not only was this largely a squash, but when he did get to do stuff, he did not look good at all. No, so that's also true. It was a double burial. And then Todd Grisham even said when it was over that today was the day the music died. Sucks to be him. Hopefully they keep the woman. They can't be dumb enough to fire her. Well, they've fired. They've been stupid in their firings in the past. F. Speaking of virgins, the pure Alicia Fox faced Natalia, and uh, Todd Grisham immediately alerted us that Alicia was green. <laughs> that was funny. His exact words, yes. And then the teacher alerted us that it took Natalia 45 minutes every day to primp Tyson Kidd's hair. <laughs> Awesome line. <laughs> that is a fantastic heel commentator line. We got the hottest abdominal stretch ever. And then a uh, big comeback, and then she did a drop kick. Natalia caught her, put her in a sharpshooter for the submission. She did not screw this up like Edge did. No. In fact, it looked really painful. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, Alicia is quite flexible. It was a match between a really good women's wrestler and a very green but damned athletic and charismatic young lady. And then Tyson, Tyson tried to jump Gabriel, and DJ made his own comeback, and... It's now DJ versus TJ. What a feud that's going to be. Tyson Kidd and DJ Gabriel. Tyson Kidd not only beat him, but beat him clean with the springboard elbow. And I will speak more of this later on in this report. Not only did he beat him clean with the springboard elbow, he also took 80% of the match. Yeah. This is a long squash here. 
Yeah. Which I'm fine with because Tyson Kidd is awesome. Now, as most of you are aware, Vince is not the biggest Christian fan, that being Vince McMahon. Thinks he's goofy looking and uh, in a mid-carter for life, but he won here. And also on the show, DJ Gabriel lost to Tyson Kidd. And it struck me during the show how times have changed. I was I was actually watching the DJ Gabriel match, and Alicia Fox trots out in a short skirt and furry boots. They may have been Uggs. And I sat there and I thought, think in 10 years from now, in 2019, when we're watching WWE 24-7, and here comes Alicia Fox wearing those boots. We will howl with laughter at what people fucking wore in 2009, including those fucking boots. And I thought... Think about what would have happened if we would have seen these matches in 1999. There's no way Christian was winning this Battle Royal in 1999. And there is no fucking way in the world that a guy with the body of DJ Gabriel was going to lose clean to a guy with the body of Tyson Kidd. Times have changed. Now, all things being equal, unless you look like Batista, which is nowadays almost nobody, it is of great benefit to be a good worker. We're having Armando Estrada on the show tomorrow, and he was a manager. And next thing you know, he comes back to uh, TV with a great body Mm -hmm. during a time where they're heavily testing for steroids. He comes back with a great body and is apparently passing these tests, but he wasn't all that good in the ring, and he got fired. DJ fucking Gabriel has got an incredible body and is somehow passing tests. He's probably on his way out. It's incredible to watch this now and see a guy like uh, Tyson Kidd beating him and a guy like Christian, who Vince isn't even really high on, winning a battle royal because since coming back, Mick Carter or not, he's been awesome. He has good matches. Had great matches. He produces good product. So there you go, everybody. Learn how to wrestle, for crying out loud. Go to Lance's school. Go to Buddy's school. Go to OVW. Learn how to wrestle and quit taking so many drugs. I was thinking about that when I was watching TNA. All these guys were coming out just gassed to the gills. And I was just sitting there thinking, you know, when 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 you watch UFC and, you know, I'm, I'm sure certain guys are on certain non-detectable drugs or, or they're passing tests somehow. But in general, you've got a lot of guys that look like just athletes as opposed to uh, bodybuilders. And then WWE is the state of the art as it, as it has been for many, many, many decades now. And the guys that they've got on top are, are uh, you know, just guys, many of them not on any drugs at all. And it's it's uh, then you watch TNA and it's like, boy, what the hell's going on here? It's so goofy to see all these guys on steroids. It's like, why? Why would you do that for this business now? <laughs> why would you do that for this business? Because you can't go to WWE on those drugs. And you're not getting a push based on your physique and TNA. So why would you even get on the drugs? What's the point nowadays? I don't even know anymore. I feel like Lex Luger. Times have changed. But for those of you who think perhaps we missed something, no. There were two single matches and a battle royal on the show. And it was a great show, by the way. A great show. There was a Sean Undertaker video that was awesome. There was the Evan Bourne video. That was the show. There were no skits. There were no promos. There were no backstage packages. And it led to an awesome, awesome show. So thank you, ECW. 